Elohim, Islam, this is Minister Said Mahdi. Disclaimer, because the Heavenly Father said that his nation was split into 73 sects, it's no surprise today that other sects such as the Nation of Islam, the Moor Science Temple of America, the 5% Nation of Gaza and Earth, the Nuwabians, Salafi and Sunni Islamic sects are priding themselves in being divinely guided. In the game of scholar wars, every sect has chiefs or leaders that speak for the ministry of their sects in order to convert and win the hearts of those misguided, seeking and learning along the way. So I want every Islamic seeker of knowledge to watch and listen to my playbook, my lectures, just like you would every Sunday when you're watching football, okay? With the open mind, teams are battling every Sunday competing for the ultimate prize. Here in Islam, the ultimate prize is paradise. If you disagree, as Allah says, in anything, take it up with Allah and the Messenger. This is the best of the world. I said, what's up? It's your boy, Khalil Amani. We're about to get this thing started. Daniela, whether you black Jesus minister or whether you apostle, don't be mad that you, all you folks, have to subscribe to an ism. To a religious point of view that has been handed down to you from somewhere. All of you would be Hebrew Israelites, have joined something that some other folks created 60, 70 years ago. None of you are original thinkers. None of you build off of previous biblical traditions. You just parrot. Probably want a cracker. You just ape. You just regurgitate. You just upchuck. You just vomit that which comes from some organized set of ideals. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Elohim. Saido Makti, this is the 28th. Yes, religion is paganism. And culture is Dean Al Islam. Khalid Omani uh, did a great work. So, uh, shout out to uh, Khalid Omani for this work here. Right, culture has strict rules, a hierarchy, and an intimate circle, like secret societies. What Khalid Omani is going to do is he's going to expose how most Hebrew Israelite camps over here in the West are really following paganism, which is called religion. You see, in the deen of Islam, we don't call Islam a religion. Not over here at the RGY. We call Islam a culture. And I'm going to use some of his revelations. And I'm going to give you my revelations directly from the Most High. And put them together so that you may see how Islam is a culture just like ancient Israelite traditions. But I'm going to show how today many people who call themselves Muslims and followers of Islam are actually following religion, paganism, just like the so-called black man and black woman in America who call themselves Christians, Jehovah Witness, Baptist, ISUPK, etc. If you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite, reading the Bible, you are a pagan. And RGY, we are going to show that. So let's get right into it. Back! On paganism and the pagans. That's right. That's what this video is about. Putting some respect. 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 Okay. On paganism and the pagans. For I will show you in this video that had it not been for the pagans, 
there would be no Judaism, no Christianity, and no Islam. And therefore, there would be no bastard children of those three great Western religions. I'm talking about like the Hebrew Israelite movement and other subsequent movements that come out of the three Western religions. Babylon mystery religion, it talks a lot about paganism and shows you how, you know, paganism is all throughout the Christian faith. Um, of course, one needs to read about the life of Constantine. Constantine, we'll talk about it a little more, but Constantine, he made it cool to be a Christian. Yes, he did. You know, National Sunday Law. These are just books that, you know, you can pick up. And of course, you know, Christian symbolism. Read how St. Augustine wrestled with some of the pagan stuff. It's a lot going on. The Druid tradition, talking about the pagan Druids. But now, let's talk about the... Right, because every Baptist, Jehovah's Witness, Christian, Dr. York, Jamil Adameen, I mean Abu Jamal, right? All these black people who subscribe to all these different philosophies that are considered to be religious can still get killed. Black lives don't matter. Even though the ones killing their ass are purported Christians. Jehovah's Witness, Protestants, Catholics, right? When it comes to the so-called black men in America, it don't matter what you call yourself. When the so-called racist government wants to kill your ass, he's going to kill you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of anything pagan, religious, right? Why are God's children dying? Because right? this is what they call themselves. We are God's children. Why are you dying then? Why is it that every time you turn on the TV, you hear about another racist cop, racist murder, or any type of drug addiction or pharmaceutical psychiatry issue in the black community, poverty, gang violence, orphanages, women, uh, uh, single mothers? Why you always hear these dysfunctionalist symptoms in our community, but we they supposed to be God's children? You see, culture practices... Culture protects a believer, and that's why black lives don't matter. You see, Islam, because he said that paganism has created Islam, but that's only because he only understands a narrative starting from the mainstream. All those books he pulled out were very, very uh, European. He hasn't even tested the waters of more science yet. So you see, religion does that, right? We are God's preferred, but the Israelites made themselves bigger than what they were, right? Just like the Moors. The Moors bloodline, the Ishmaelites and the Israelites were the God's preferred race of people. But within that race of people, there was something called the royal family. See, that's culture. It protects a believer. When you understand who the royal families are and you're inclined to the royal families, then and only then are you considered to be a believer. But you see, God's preferred race didn't like that. And that's why the Israelites killed their own prophets, just like the Moors assassinated Imam Hussein, Ali ibn Abu Talib, gave Fatima a miscarriage. Right, so this is uh, the sixth Moors crown. He says, the messenger of Allah says, I am the thicker and the Aima are the people of the thicker. Right? The Imam said, we are his people. We must be asked. This, this, is, the, this is the interpretation of the verses. Ask the people of thicker if you don't know. 1643-217 According to the fifth Moors crown these the thicker is supposed to be the prophet Muhammad and the people of the thicker is supposed to be the Moors crown 12 
Jafar Sadiq, the six Moors crown, said, He who denies any of the living imams has denied the dead. See, this is the royal family. This is how the Moors saw themselves, the royal family. You see, the children of Abraham had royal families. The whole entire Israelite tribe was preferred, just like the Ishmaelites. They were the preferred race. As Genesis 17, 20 says, I will bless him and give him many children and many descendants. Okay. He will be the father of 12 princes. So you see, he's even in the Israelite traditions about the Moorish crowns. This is a royal family, though. This is culture. You see, all of the revelations of the Most High, all of the prof prophetic revelations, the books, that belongs to a, speci a, speci a specific family within the chosen race. Is that right? See, and this is the reason why Abu Bakr is guilty of murder. See, the interpretation of this verse, and when the infant is questioned about what it has sent for, 81.8. See, a lot of the Sunni Muslims don't even realize that this was a prophecy. According to uh, the Six Moors Crown, he said, this is Muqsin. This is the baby that Umar ibn Al-Qutab kicked into her death, into its death. Need I go further? According to the Moorish crown, but Fatima would initiate and complain of what had affected her of Abu Bakr and Umar in the capture of Fadak. Right? And having to walk to him in a gathering of immigrants and the helpers, addressing him regarding the matter of Fadak. Fadak was a uh, like like some land, like some acres of land in the pond that the Prophet gave him. Right, the Prophet had left that as an inheritance for her. But after the prophet died, Abu Bakr was like, the prophets don't leave nothing. So she had to literally fight against the campaigns of the prophet over something that her father gave her. See, this is the royal family, the royal Moorish crown. The, the, the whole, the, the Moorish tribe began to fight against the royal family, right? And, her, and, 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 and so, um, you know, she basically had like a, a letter where the prophet had wrote it down like this is what I give my daughter and then Abu Bakr and you know they literally ripped that joint up like disrespecting her right after the prophet died and words of Omar give your paper which the mentioning that your father had wrote it to you and bring it out and let me see right displaying it to her upon the heads of the ones from the Quraysh who were present and the immigrants and the helpers and the rest of the Arabs and his splitting it and tearing it this is the six Moors crown. See, these are our traditions. See, we got the story. But in the mainstream Islam, it's not being taught because religion is paganism. All right? We continue. Imam Abu Jafar, this is the fifth Moors crown, said that the, the messenger of Allah said, my authority, this is Allah talking, right? He said that Allah revealed to him that my authority is completely established among the unfortunate ones of your followers. Those who refuse to acknowledge the divine authority of Ali and his successors have rejected my authority. With Ali and his successors are your traditions and the traditions of the prophets before you. So you see, when we're looking at more science, we're talking about a royal family preserving the knowledge of Elohim. Amen. Abu Jafar said again we are the translator of the revelations of Elohim like this is our status 12 princes this is the same type of culture that the Israelites had they had a priesthood and it belonged in the seed of Judah Solomon is the son of David right we having a particular family within a chosen people That they are all up in your religions. You cannot be a Christian and not have pagan roots. If you celebrate Easter, you are also, by happenstance, thanks to Constantine the Great, you are celebrating the worship of the goddess Istar, circa 300 AD slash CE. 
when the Christians were getting the short end of the religious stick, the pagans were ruling the day. But a man named Emperor Constantine came along after having a semi quasi pseudo conversion himself to Christianity he decided that the whole ideal of sport and play killing Christians that's what they did on Sunday and any other day of the week let's go see the lions devour the Christians He's right. He's right about the the brutality and paganism of the so-called white man, the Romans, right? But I got a question for the elder. Who's the first person to record that Jesus said he was the son of God? Again, elder. Who's the first to record that Jesus said he was the son of God? Because we're talking about a time period where now the teachings of the Israelites, remember, our traditions are their traditions and, and the traditions of Israel is that there's a royal family and the royal family has initiates. Okay, that's culture. Culture has initiates, right, that preserve the traditions of the holy prophets. Like those hadiths that I just shared with you about the royal crowns, like you don't get that in Sunni, Salafi, and, uh, and Shia Islam. Like you don't get that in mainstream when they're talking about we are the, tr the, the, uh, the translators of God's revelations. We are the treasures of God and we are the successors of the prophets. Like you don't get that kind of lecturing and teaching. So I want to know who's the first person to record that. Because I guarantee you that that person who said it first wasn't an initiate. Wasn't an initiate of Jesus, I guarantee you. Right? The religion of Islam was created since Abu Bakr. When he, along with other prominent companions of the prophet, stole the government. Okay? In the books of Acts, even Paul is, is testifying that he was a student, right? And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all scared of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him. So it's obvious right here by Paul's own testimony that Barnabas was one of the disciples of Jesus, Joshua. So before Paul even went out preaching, he was underneath the, 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 the custodianship of Barnabas. But don't nobody talk about his gospel, though. See, in culture, the initiated are the scholars by default, not by popular vote. OK. Religion, paganism created the ballot, the voting and popular vote system. Right. Demo democracy. Democracy. Listen to that word. Democracy. 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 Because this is paganism. Right. This is what Abu Bakr and them did. They created a ballot a voting, a popular voting system and stole the government directly from the royal family. Right. In ancient Egypt, the pharaohs represented the imams and the inner circle represented the disciples. Right. This is like a secret society and culture. There's public knowledge that we give to the people and there's the knowledge of the initiates. The Queen Mother Azaria, Queen Mother Fatima, the daughter of the prophet, she agrees. Right. The men of manifested us the contents of their chest when you went and veiled formed a barrier between you. For every people, there is a nearness and status in the presence of Allah. So she's acknowledging the hierarchy. For every people, there is a nearness and status in the presence of God. God sees everything in a hierarchy. Says the Mujahideen, the warriors, have a higher status than those who sit at home. Right. Allah says you will not be able to be fed to your wives because imagine if you had a wife who was down with you when you ain't have no money. Nobody knew you. Like she holds a higher status than any other wife that you get after her. You didn't blew up. You got your money big now. And suddenly you get a second and third wife. That second and third wife can never fulfill the shoes of the first one because the first one was down with you when you had nothing. It's the same thing in Islam. There's a hierarchy. Right. The six Moors crown said, you may think that we determine the matter of the leadership, the imama. By Allah, it is a covenant from Elohim revealed to his messenger and then to certain men after one goes, another will come. Right. This is the revelation. This is what we follow. This is our tradition. This is our culture, not a religion.
But Emperor Constantine, after having a dream where he made all of his soldiers put the cross on their shields, and the, and, 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 it, and the cross said, In this name you shall conquer. Insignio victory hocknos or some shit like that. <laughs> And he went and fought a war, and he won the war, which gave him more credibility to believe that it was called the Edict of Milan. In 313, that was the end of Christian persecution. Emperor Constantine outlawed it. Emperor Constantine wrote into law that Christians will never be beat up and killed and fed to lions again. The Edict of Milan in 313 who gave the Christians December 25th. <laughs> Facts! Facts. It was the pagans who gave Christianity the triune, the three in one, the trinity. And so as a Christian, you walk around thinking that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or Spirit, that the three in one is some new theological religious device. And you argue which one is which, Who's the greatest? God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. You go through all that haggle. When the reality is, the three in one, God is mother, son, father, all that stuff. That's, that's paganism. It's what, what must be understood is that religion creates the Council of Nicaea. Guerrilla Hebrews, Sunnism, Sunni Islam, Salafism, and Shiaism, right? You got different races interpreting sacred texts without being initiated. That, that's how paganism came inside the Israelite traditions because you'll read if you study the, uh, the, the book of Acts how Barnabas and Paul had a breakout. See, Paul wanted to be a Roman in his heart. Like you got a lot of house Negroes on the yard. Like shout out to Siraj Wahaj, I mean Muhammad, and Naeem Abdullah out of Philly, right? You got a lot of these false imams who dress up like Muslims but want to please the white man by practicing religion, right? It's when your religion has been uh, basically modified by the white man. The white man is telling you how to practice your, your religion or your, yeah. That's what it is. It's paganism. So, what Khalid Omani is saying is 100% accurate. Like, Constantine unified some Israelite narrative and joined it with his pagan Roman white man culture. And that's exactly what the Sunnis did. They incorporated their own paganistic ideas, like the ballot voting choosing the imams like this is not our culture this is not the dean of islam the chosen don't choose to be chosen their choices were nullified like you can get that in the story of Eunice you remember when Eunice was swallowed up by the whale he was chosen and he went to go and preach the word of God to the people but he's like these people are such disbelievers the pagans and then he ran away he was done and God caused a whale to swallow him up and, 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 and literally he was terrorized by God but God didn't kill him God didn't kill him because he was the chosen he had a mission to do you you don't you don't like what you're doing you don't like that you got to be a preacher man but you are the preacher man and you will preach this word because you are the chosen that's how it works in the culture of Elohim, in the culture of Allah, right? The God of Abraham. Muhammad was in a cave. He was just meditating and suddenly an angel squeezes him and says, you the one? Moses is just walking around, sees a fire, goes up to the mountain and says, and suddenly the fire says, you the one? 
Like it's not something that You choose When you are chosen Your choice has already been Nullified Like you don't have a choice You've been chosen And you see When you get to this Position In the kingdom of God You become a royal An untouchable A made man So the tradition of Israel as is as with the Moors is that there's always a royal family. Okay? Allah says in 517, Mary. Right? It was written that the pagans, the Kafirs, they would say that Elohim is Jesus, right? And this is now Khalil Omani talking about how this theological debate about the divinity of Jesus or the Messiah is they're literally trying to have a discussion about Israelite traditions but that's where Israel fucked up because when you have a royal family then the only ones who can answer any questions about the culture is the royal crown and that's why I showed you that tradition where it says that we are the reminder ask us like it's illegal in Israelite traditions and Abrahamic traditions and Moorish tradition. It's illegal for another race to teach back to the chosen preferred race of God, their culture. Like that's guerrilla Hebrew. Like you got these like impersonators, vocab Malone coming in with these, you know, Western certifications of so-called Israelite traditions, which is really religion, paganism, teaching the children of Abraham their own culture like this is this don't go this don't fly in ancient and Moorish culture or in Israelite traditions that's why I'm calling on the family of the royal family of Judah like where y'all at because I know y'all can agree to, to this it was written that this was going to happen you going to have people from another race literally trying to give interpretations of Israelite Sacred traditions Just like today in, 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 in the religion of Islam Like I said Islam is a culture But in the religion of Islam The paganism of Islam You got now White people Interpreting the Quran Asian people Interpreting the Quran All these races Interpreting the Quran This shit is like some orgy sex Like this is not how Islam The true Dina Islam Is taught there's a hierarchy. There's a royal family. And of this royal family, you have teachers. These teachers create disciples and then they become the initiate. This is how it was in Israel. Everybody else are students. And then anyone outside of our race, our tribe, our clan, they got to come and ask questions. You can't, you can't come and try to teach us about our culture. Like you can't tell a white man about his culture. That's 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 arrogant. You can't tell another person about their own culture. This is how the Moors crown. This is how we think. We don't let nobody who is not of our blood try to narrate to us about who the fuck we are. It's crazy. It was revealed they would say that Elohim is Jesus and Jesus is Elohim it was written that they was going to say that right your Lord creates whatever he wants and chooses what choice do they have again the chosen don't choose to be chosen the chosen were already chosen right the, their, their choice is nullified Allah says what choice do they have they don't have a choice okay Right, the Gospel of Barnabas says, "Cursed be everyone who shall insert into my sayings that I am the Son of God." Right, this is the prophecy of Jesus according to Barnabas. It was written in five seventeen. Cut kafaladina kal Elohim homas I have been married. Right, it was written that this was going to happen, and it happened. And Paul is your perfect example. That's why I, t I asked the question to kill Lomani. And to all Israelites out there, who's the first person to say that Jesus said, I'm the son of God? And you're not going to get it from one of the initiates, one of the intimate members of the of the of the of the 12 disciples. Oh, now nah, you ain't going to hear any of them try to purport that. 
544 of the prophets judge the Jews with who comply with the Torah. See, there you go. There goes your royal family. The prophets were the judges, right? As did the rabbis and the priests who were entrusted as guardians of the book. So you had the prophet, the royal family, who had control over the book, and they judged with the book, the entire tribe. And then you had the priests, the rabbis who were the protectors of it. This is this is the culture. This is the same thing we do over here in the Moorish crown. The, is, the Ishmaelites, the Moors are the same. You have the teachers of the book and the protectors of the book. Twelve Moorish crowns. We're not going to forget. We're not going to forget. As God lives in every good work, he that fears God ought to separate himself from the works of the world so as to never corrupt the good work. Right? A real Israelite is like a roster, man. Okay, racism defeats religion every time. But culture, nah. Okay, racism says every race dresses one way, celebrates one way, and heals and cures the sick one way. That's psychiatry, FDA drugs, vaccine, hip-hop, sports, holidays, and Western fashion. Jesus says, I am not the Messiah whom all the tribes of the earth expect, even as God promised to our father Abraham, saying, In your seed shall I bless all the tribes. God will show mercy upon the world and will send the messenger for whom God made all things. He shall come from the south with power and destroy the idols with their paganism. This is the Messiah prophesizing Muhammad, according to Barnabas, one of the initiated. You see, religion works like, okay, on Friday, I'm going to pull out my throat, but then Monday and Sunday and Saturday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, I'm going to look like a, a Westerner. I'm going to think like a Westerner. I'm going to act like a Westerner. When I get sick, I'm going to take drugs. Like, this is not our culture. Allah says, they are divinely guided by the Naj Najima, the star, and the teachers. According to the six Moors crown, the Najima is Muhammad, the star. And the teachers are the Moors crown, the 12 princes, as prophesied in the Bible. So you see, there is a hierarchy in Dina Islam. The culture of Islam is that there is a royal family that teaches the holy book. Having so many people teach the book or have the opportunity to teach the book is very orgy-like. Culture is like having a holy marriage. People who follow the religion are pagans and people who follow culture are divinely guided. This is the reason why the Gospel of Barnabas was a prize of the initiates. We're going to keep going. It was written Elohim will make a covenant with the children of Israel and raise up tw 12 tribal chiefs amongst them. Elohim said, I am with you so long as you come to prayer, give your tithings and trust in my messages. And there's a whole lot of more things in the covenant that they're they supposed to do. Right? The Greek Bible was treason against the prophets. See, 12 tribal chiefs who were supposed to be loyal to the royal family. The Most High said, so long as you help the prophets, the messengers, right? So long as you help the messengers, I am with you, 12 tribal chiefs. Right? And this is the reason why the Israelites got put into slavery because they betrayed the royal family, just like the Moors. Like when they went and conquered Spain in 700 AD, what they don't tell you is that they've been killing and slaughtering the royal family, Imam Hussein. They gave Fatima a miscarriage, right? They killed Imam Ali like they don't talk about that like every disciple of the Messiah was not holy just like every companion of the Prophet Muhammad was not holy that's what we gotta get out to the mainstream because a lot of so called Muslims are being misguided thinking that Abu Bakr and Umar are really royal and righteous jealousy is a real thing that rebels the soul from justice especially when there's a prophet or imam amongst them Again, the chosen don't ask to be chosen. The first Moorish crown said, These are the people whose actions in this world were pure. Their eyes were tearful. Their nights in this world were like days, and their days were like nights when feeling lonely and separated. So Allah made paradise their returning place, a reward and payback. Like the chosen go through so much shit that an average human can't go through. 
Right, so Paul was able to take the hypocrites who betrayed Barnabas to Rome with the new doctrine. 513. Right? Because Paul remixed, changed, and reinterpreted the kalam, the word. This is how you get Christianity, paganism. And now the so-called black man in the West, who's really a, a Israelite, is following paganism. Remixed it. That's, that was Paul. 12, 12 leaders of 12 tribes were responsible to encourage their clansmen to support the royal family. They did not upkeep that. And this is the reason why you see in England the Queen of, the Queen of England, because she learned she learned that esoteric, that sacred knowledge from the Moors. But of course the Moors by that time had remixed it because the royal family was in captivity. Okay? I got a story. I'm a, I got I'm gonna prove that the chosen are always protected though. Alright, in 2000, uh, 2020, uh, I was locked up for a crime I didn't commit. I was accused of um, disturbing the peace when I was really practicing my first religion, freedom of speech to convey and teach my religion to my people. That's what I do. I'm a preacher, man. I've been chosen to warn my people about who they are, to get to the culture and leave religion. Right? So when you go through the test, once you take the oath, I took the oath, right, in 2014. So that's when I took the oath. In 2016 is when I got my name, the Mahdi. So by the time I got my name, I'm now engaging in the mission. So you have to go through certain things within those two years in order to be prepared to do what God has called you to do, like Eunice. Okay? So my character and my personality in jail is now affecting other mates. The COs have plotted to kill me. And there were even some Israelites who were in the bid. So I'm in my jail cell just praying, meditating, being still, not really speaking. And that rocked them. You can hear the CO screaming, just go in there and kill him. Kill him already. And there was one CO who was affected by my, my, my disposition. He felt something in his heart. I call him the quiet believer. Because the spirit of God moved through him and he felt who I was. He seen God through me and knew this one right here. You better leave him alone. It got so, so serious, so dramatic that he started to, you could almost hear that he was getting ready to be moved to tears. He literally was cursing out his own COs. And you got to understand when you went in jail and you got the COs arguing amongst each other in front of the inmates, that looks bad. Because now the inmates are winning. They're winning the they're winning the support of the COs. And the jail COs and inmates are not supposed to really be friends like that. It's supposed to be a type of uh, 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 order where you're like, yes, sir. I will do what you say. But when the COs are actually fighting this, the other COs based off of how COs are treating the inmates. Then, you know, you got God on your side. So they were plotting to kill me, but something happened where well, that man did something. And suddenly five days before I was supposed to be released, I was released. I was released five days early. And two, I'm telling you, it was like two or three of Abraham's children trying to kill me. And they were in the bed with the, with the CEOs to try to extort me and kill me. I'm giving I'm giving examples. I'm giving testimony to what it means to be chosen. Right. The dean of Islam is a culture, not a religion. Jealousy wants what they was not chosen to be. God body. I self law and master Islam. Right. This culture is when you have become the vessel of the Holy Spirit. Right. Jesus, the son of David, the son of, you know, the son of Solomon. This is a royal family. You, if you're not of the royal family, then you're not really in charge of teaching Israelites or Moors their culture. If you're not of the royal family, then you're following religion, even if you're reciting the books, because the books are supposed to be taught by the members of the royal family. OK, one of the sooner fallacies 
is in uh, chapter 5, verse 6, right? Allah says, وَسَمْ هُوْ بِرُوْسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلْكُمْ إِلَىٰ خَيْبَانِ Right, wash your head, but wipe your feet to the ankles. When you go, when you see the Sunnis making wudu, you see how they be throwing water on their feet, like as if they at a pool or something. Right, wam sahu birusikum. Sahu means like let it flow. That's like to wash, to stream your hair with water, let it flow. But when you when Allah says wa arjulkum, that means like window windshield wipers to wipe your feet to the ankle so the water that comes from your hair you use that same water to wipe your feet right but in Sunni Islam they were literally you go and you see these little voodoo stations they be looking like 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 like, like you just got out the shower or some shit it's really disgusting this is not Islam this is not Islam this is paganism right Voodoo is so regulated that you can, like, you only need a 20 ounce bottle of water in one bowl. And even, and even less. Like, voodoo is supposed to be so minimum, like, the, the uses of the water. You don't even need that much water to make voodoo. Like, we preserve water. We really care about nature. Right, I, I I know where the tribe of Judah is, but I want to know where the royal family is. Like I believe Tupac was probably of the royal family. I I really believe that. Like his his message had to be of a prophetic uh 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 uh, uh in, 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 in entrustment. Maybe I believe he I really believe he was of the royal family of Judah. Judah is a tribe that's preferred by God, just like the Moors. But within Judah and within the Moors, there's a royal family. These royal families are the ones that the Israelites were killing, just like the Moors were killing. So that means that even within the family, there is tribal war. Meanwhile, you got the white man watching this tribal war of chosen people bicker and fight over who's going to be the leader when the leader has already been chosen. You see this shit going on, y'all? Israelites, you better wake the hell up and know that I'm the Mahdi. This is the 12th Moors crown on the mic here. Religion makes means off of holidays, Ramadan, Hajj, and Eid. Culture preserves facilitates and maintains the integrity of, of, of the holy days see we don't call it a holiday we call it holy days like how you gonna have hajj but 30 minutes away from um, uh, mecca you got 11 million starving yemenis and saudi arabia can't feed them but i'm telling you right now when they gonna have hajj season they're gonna give the people who come the pilgrims they're gonna give them food they're gonna give them water fresh towels and shit they're going, to, they're going to give them the amenities that they need to really, like, have a good vacation. Really is what it, what it is. It's a vacation. Why is Saudi Arabia able to provide, you know, protect and, you know, the pilgrims every year for Ramadan and Hajj? But 30 minutes can't even feed 11 million starving Yemenis. They, they Muslim down there. The, the women and children and the young men, they're over there looking like, a, you know, Picking out the trash cans, trying to find a little bit of scraps to eat food, but they supposed to be Muslim in Saudi Arabia. See, this is the reason why the religion has to be pagan, the religion of Islam, because the culture of Islam, the deen of Islam is in the hands of the chosen. Like there's even inheritors rights for, you know, childless men and women. Like the prophet actually had a child. And in the Quran, chapter 4, 176, the very last verse, the Lord is given instruction on how a person who doesn't have a child is supposed to give his inheritance over. But the prophet had a child and Abu Bakr said, oh, the prophets don't give no inheritance. Like that was the Sunni, like. That was almost as big as the Council of Nicaea. That was like the the religion of Islam, Council of Nicaea, when they literally took Fadak from Fatima. That's how big it was. 
So, you know, Sayyidul Makti, 12th Mosh Crown, we out here to let the people know, y'all better stop with the paganism. There's nothing you can do to stop the Moorish crown. The Makti is spiritually guided. This is a revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming to take back what has been wrongly taken from the royal family. And who's better to teach the culture of Allah back to the Moors than a Moor himself? Calling on a royal family of Judah. Where you at? Because I know you know what I'm talking about is the truth. The royal family of Judah are the, are the protectors and the holders of the book. They going to testify to who I am. They going to know who the fuck I am. You can't be calling yourself a so-called black African American. Follower of the royal family. Through a lens and spectrum of Roman Catholicism Greek culture like y'all already messed up Israel and so that's why there's 12 princes over here in the south down here in Mecca we here to give you the good news of Joshua coming back to fight with the Mahdi that's also prophesied but you don't know time is a ticking and the ticking is the time this is the 12th Moorish Crown, third revelation. I